same a place as you got there. Hey, they're from Mom. Who are they from? Don't you touch that, or I'll bonk you right in the noggin. Think I should go out? Honey, your husband died. He didn't ask you to go with him, did he? I flew one of these in Nam. He did? Mr. Buchanan told Molly that he flew this plane in Vietnam. And that's impossible. Now, why? It's a plane that doesn't exist and never has. Grandpa, our mom is out with a liar. Mom is pretty. You sort of know it. But you always think of her as mom before you think of her as anything else. Hardly ever think of your mom as dating. Until it happens, that is. Mom, I'm gonna be late and I promise you owe me a meet her before well, class. Go on, Mom. Let's get going. Why are you so mad? Grandpa's not mad. He's enjoying his morning grub. Hey, where's Arthur's water dish? He looks mad. Well, if you read this, you'd be mad too. Early for that, Jess, isn't it? It's never too early to say how you feel. Yeah. Generally, it's too late. The water dish is under the table. Here, Mom. Oh, yeah, thank you. Mm. Gus, are you going shopping today? Maybe I put that badly. Will you go shopping today? I've got a few things I need. I won't go to the pharmacy. Last time, everything on the list embarrassed me. Oh, you're going to be late in that pharmacy. I'm going to get attention if I'm late. You know you never have been late. Yeah, but you see, at this school, they don't fool around. You get a detention for being late. You also get a detention for pulling around in class, for throwing spitballs, and for slamming guys up against lockers. Why would you want to slam somebody up against a locker? Something to do in the hall between classes. Kidding! Joke! Mother, we really have to go. OK, everybody get in the car. Let's go. Okay, there you go. Just a few things. That'll be great. Thanks, guys. I'll see you later. Chris, let me see your mouth. Come on in, Kaplan. They're gone. They're gone. They're gone. You know, there's nothing to stop you from coming in while they're still here. My nerves. I like things nice and quiet like they used to be in the morning, you know? Just me, you, and a cup of coffee. Morning paper. I know, pal, but don't hang around the back door, okay? You make me feel terrible. If you don't want to come in, stay home, and then I'll call you when they leave. The phone would wake my wife. She needs all the beauty sleep she can get. Two facelifts she's had. First one made her look glazed like cake frosting. After the second one, she had trouble closing her eyes. It was scary, like a zombie, you know? <laughs> That's the sports page, Kaplan. You don't read the sports page. Gladys says I should take up a sport, something where I get exercise and fresh air. Well. Somehow I can't see you playing football. No, no, no. Football is out. So is ice hockey. I'm not a fighter. I'm thinking of something quiet like golf, where all you have to do is knock a little ball into a hole. Hey, Joe, there's 18 little holes. <laughs> They're spread out over a thousand acres, and you got to lug about 50 pounds of scrap iron with you every step of the way. You know they got a new thing called a golf cart. You can drive right out to those holes. You wouldn't ride in a golf cart. You know who rides in golf carts? Who? Fat, disgusting drunks. I didn't know that. 
You want some exercise? You come and go with me. I got to go do some shopping for Jess and the kids. Good. That's what I do best. Something smells. Moose. Geek. No, scented moose. Oh, Chris's hair. What's the scent? Dead turtle? Mother, will you make them grow up? Oh, honey, I've tried. But no matter what I do, they just insist on growing up one day at a time. Mom's got a boyfriend she's trying to impress. What? Well, whenever you fuss with your hair like that, it's because you're trying to impress some boy. Don't be so stupid. Mom's mom. She doesn't have any guys. She's mom. Well, wait a minute. Just because mom is mom doesn't mean that she... Doesn't mean what? You don't have a boyfriend or anything like that, do you? You don't, do you, Mom? What I have, sweet face, is an important meeting with a client of Mr. Cathcart's. And that's the only reason you're fussing with your hair, huh? Yep, David, you're right. That's the only reason I'm fussing with my hair. Which one is Mr. Buchanan? The cashmere sport coat and the thousand dollar watch with the eel skin band. <laughs> I didn't ask for an inventory. Mr. Buchanan? Yes. Hi. Hi. I'm Jessica Witherspoon. I'm Mr. Cathcart's assistant. Oh, will you come with me, please? Anywhere. I beg your pardon? Uh, you lead and I'll follow. Anywhere. You see, I'm from out of town, and I need all the guidance I can get. Oh. Well, I'm from out of town, too. I guess we'll just have to take our chances. Don't forget to suffer the poker game. I never have forgot it, have I? It's because I always remind you. Creamy yums. Joe, what the heck are creamy yums? What? what? Creamy yums. It's here on the list. It sounds feminine. You sure they sell it in a grocery store? <laughs> I don't even know what it is. How am I going to know where they sell it? Ask a clerk? That's a good idea. Would you do that for me? Oh, well, it's not my list. I mean, I don't even have a list. I just came along for the ride. Yeah, and why am I putting up with you? Well, is it my grocery list? No. I mean, is it my responsibility? No. Are you my friend? Well, what are you making a federal case out of something neither one of us knows what he's talking about? Because I don't even know what I'm doing here. I'm not used to being the family shopper. Mary used to do it. That's for me, all I need is a little bologna and a can of tuna now and then. What do I know about pantyhose and lollipops? Besides, how's it going to sound? A grown man walks up to a clerk and says, you got any creamy yums? It's going to sound ridiculous. That's why you want me to do the asking. Now, you're making a federal Let case. Let old Kaplan do it. What difference does it make? Ask a manager. OK. They're supposed to be confidential. Excuse me, do you have any creamy yums? I didn't catch that. Creamy yums. Ooh, creamy yums. It's the new breakfast cereal. Don't know whether there's any left or not. There's been a run on them. Bert, do we have any creamy yums in stock? I think we have one more, Phil. Would you bring it up here for the gentleman, please? Right away. You'll love them, sir. There's a prize in every box. Thank you. Mr. Cathcart felt that you might want to take a few minutes and look at the preliminary sketches before your meeting, so they're all right here in the portfolio. Great. I'll leave you to it. No, no, stay. By all means. Please, have a seat. Be nice to have some company. All right. Would you like some coffee? No. And you, uh, you said your name was Jessica. Yes, it's Jessica here, and then it's Jesse everywhere else. I like the way this hallway leads into the... You married? Li I'm a widow. Sorry. How long were you married? Sixteen years. It's a long time to live with somebody and lose them. Yes, it is.
Do you want to make any changes uh, in the sketches? I could take notes, uh, additions or deletions or anything. Are you free for dinner tomorrow night? No. Yes. I can't. Well, I can, but I... It's all right. If you're not free, you're not free. And were you asking for business or for pleasure? Well, let's just wait and see. This may sound a little bit strange to you, but I would like to check with my children. Well, not strange exactly, just a little unusual. How many children do you have? Three. Eight, 12, and 15. And you uh, have to ask them uh, before you can go out to dinner? No, if you mean, do I have to get permission? No, of course I don't. No, it's just that I haven't been out with anybody since their father died. So I would want to get their blessing. I'm just not sure how they'd react to my going out with another man. Well, you have to sometime, don't you? No, I don't. Have to. Sir, we went around the block three times. Nothing happened. Except we loitered around a lot of fire hydrants. Anyway, next time it's your walk. Unless one of your sisters volunteers. No, thanks. Me too. You hear that, my boy? So much for your fatal charm. I'll be done with it. Grandpa? Yeah? Do you remember the Depression? I sure do. Why do you ask? Well, because we're on that chapter in American history. And I never actually talked to anyone who lived during it. Was it really as bad as they say? It was worse. The whole nation went down the drain. Well, how did we come out of it? A lot of hard work. And Franklin Roosevelt, he was president at the time. He created a lot of jobs that weren't there before. He called it the New Deal. It seemed to work. You sound sad. Yeah, well, see, it didn't have to happen. A lot of good people were ruined. I'll get it. Wait a minute. Be sure you know who it is before you let him in. I will. What if it happens again? What? A depression. Some of the kids at school say that there'd be a war. They say that's how we got out of the last one. Yeah, well, what do you think? We can't have another war. Why not? Because the next one will be the last one. When I was your age, I used to really worry about whether or not I'd wind up with Lou Gehrig's picture on a baseball card. You kids are thinking about nuclear war. You got a tough way to go, kids. Look! What in the name of blazes you got there? Hey, they're from Mom. Who are they from? Don't you even think of it, young man. I'll bang you with this cane. I wasn't going to. You were, too. I see the look in your eye. Now, come on. Inside, there's potatoes to peel and homework to do, and you kids need to get at it. but I had some errands that I had to run after work. No problem, honey. I'm just cooking meatloaf. We can't burn that. Those flowers are for you. Oh, my. Kids okay? They are. Chris and David are doing her homework, and Molly's watching cartoons. Hi. By yourself? Nobody you know. Just the man that I met at work today. You got your hair done. It's been a while. I thought it was about time. Time to get your hair done, you mean? Time to get my hair done, I mean. Hello, Witherspoons. 
Hello, is uh, Jessie Witherspoon there? She sure is. Jess, that's for you. Oh, thank you. Hello. Hello. This is Jeff Buchanan. Did the flowers arrive? Well, yes, they did, and they're just lovely. Let me ask you something. Please. How did you know where to send them? <laughs> I didn't. I had one of Cathcart's secretaries take care of that. If you were to go out with me, I wouldn't even know where to come to pick you up. How did you get my phone number? There are only four Witherspoons in the book, Jesse. That's not much of a challenge. And as you will see, I am the persistent sort. I guess we'll see about that. I hope so. I'll call you tomorrow. Take care. Bye. Is that him? Is the flower guy? Uh-huh. Or are you going to go out? I'm not sure yet. Oh, the heck you're not. Well, what's his name? What does he do? His name is Jeff, and... I don't know what he does. I know that I've always told you to know the boys you go out with. It's true for a girl as well as a woman. He's got a nice smile. Mother, that is so feeble. I mean, the next thing that you'll be telling me is that he dresses well. He does dress well. This woman is hopeless. She'll be the death of me. I see you put in your two cents worth. Sometimes I do. And you think I made it my mind, huh? Well, yeah. With your hair do and being all gussied up. Yeah. How do you feel about that? About what? About my going out on a date. I guess like the night you came to see uh, Johnny's mother and me. I guess I feel that way. I don't know what that means. Well, I haven't changed my opinion in 17 years. I said to her that night, it's a nice girl. It's a good woman. Come on, come on. Then you won't be disappointed if I do go out? Honey, you're all grown up now. You're an adult. I would be disappointed if you didn't act like it. If we have a few minutes before dinner, I'd like to talk to David and Molly. Sure. And the dog. Maybe you'd like to check with Arthur. Well, Marshal Man, is it ready? to introduce you to the robot Wolf Rat. Molly? Chris told me. Nito, can Naomi spend the night when you're out? He can penetrate the cat's lair. Sure. Every defense. Sure she can. David, may I come in? David. Sure. Come on in. You're home kind of late. Where were you? Gosh, I always knew there would be a time when the child would become the parent and the parent would become the child, but I hadn't thought it would happen quite this fast. Well, maybe it happens when the parent starts to act like a kid. What is that supposed to mean? I don't know. Just something to say, I guess. I came up here because I want to tell you something. I want to tell you that I'm going out tomorrow night. Out where? Wherever he takes me for dinner. Who's he? He is a man. A man's going to take you to dinner? Mm-hmm. Why? I suppose because he wants to. Why are you going to go? Because I want to. This man, 
Would Daddy like him? I don't know. I don't know him well enough to answer that. But I know this. Going out with this man has nothing to do with how deeply I love your daddy. Nothing's going to change that. Well, that's that, isn't it? No. No, that's not that, David. I suppose when I told you that, I was hoping you'd say, have a nice time. I was hoping you'd say something like, gosh, Mom, it's been a long time since you've done something nice for yourself. I think you deserve a nice dinner out. Have a nice time. When I was downstairs on the phone a while ago... Supper's ready. Get it while it's hot. David? We'll talk about this later. Kid, I've got homework. Gus, I'm coming. I'm coming. I heard you. I'm sorry to keep you waiting. I didn't mean to. There's a poker game here tomorrow night. What? I'm having a poker game here tomorrow night. I'm gonna be here. You see, I can watch the kids in case you have something you wanted to do, like maybe go out to supper. Gus? I think David might get upset if I do that. Maybe that'd be good for him. You know, nobody gets through life without being upset at least once. What do you mean? Honey, your husband died. He didn't ask you to go with him, did he? Then don't. Molly said you wanted to see me. Yeah, come on in a minute, will you, and shut the door behind you. That's a nice looking engine. Oh, this is not an engine, son. This is a locomotive. You know, when I was younger, and I first started working on the railroad. I worked on a run that ran from Kansas City to North Platte, Nebraska. Worked on a big Pacific 462, just like this one. It had the sweetest whistle you ever heard in your life. There's a fellow there working with me, a fellow by the name of Rash. Sam Rash, he was a brakeman. Never worked on any other line. Well, one day we get the news that they're switching over to diesels. Sam, he braked for the diesels for a short time, and then he just up and quit. What was his problem? Near as I can figure, he couldn't stand the change. Sometimes change hurts. Yes, sir. Tell you the truth, I wasn't crazy about it myself. But they were going to make the change, and there's nothing I could do about it, or anybody else for that matter. Sam, he should have realized that. Instead of becoming a great big pain in the neck, which is what he did. I've been pain, huh? That you have. You've turned into a regular Sam Rash. Yeah. Grandpa, do you ever miss the sound of the old whistle? I sure do. Why are we eating so early tonight, Grandpa? It's because I'm having a poker game here later, and I need this table. People are coming? Men. Men are coming. Did you guys play for money? Sure. Yep. Playing for money is what makes poker interesting. 
Some guys just play for fun. Sure they do. It is fun. Especially when you got a hand you can take your neighbor's house payment with. You're kidding. Why don't you play with me sometime? Would you really try to beat her? I would. I just barely leave her bus money. Well, there's your mother's gentleman caller. Chrissy, you go tell her he's here. David, you go let him in. I'll get the back door. You sit right where you are. I'll get the back door. You stay there and finish your supper. It's only called supper in the country and in Western movies. Oh, really? Well, if I call it dinner, will you finish your zucchini? No. Well, then, it's still supper. I ate at home. Oh, you did? Now, why am I just dead certain that you're Naomi? Hi, I'm Jeff Buchanan. I'm here to pick up your... My mom. Yeah, I know. Come on in. You can wait in there. I have to finish my dinner. Okay. What are you so scared of? I mean, you're a grown woman. I'm not. I'm not. Not right now, I'm not. Right now, I feel like a kid. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. Well, listen. What? It usually helps to have frightened kids. Oh, baby. That's very sweet. Now, if you make me cry and mess my mascara, well, you're just out of the will, that's all. Hi, I'm Jeff. Who's your friend? Naomi. Hi. Grandpa said someone should come keep you company. He's putting away the dinner dishes. Well, I couldn't ask for better company. What should we talk about? were tough during the Depression. I've heard that. SDR got us out. You know, Molly, uh, you have a great deal of presence for one so young. Thank you. What do you know, my old ship? I flew one of these in Nam. You did? You bet. Nice ship, too. I hope I haven't kept you waiting too long. Not at all. You look great. Well, thank you. Um, oh, I see you've met Molly. Hi, Naomi. I was just about to start telling them some war stories. Oh, boy, war stories. Gus, hi. Uh, I'd like you to meet my father-in-law. Gus Witherspoon. This is Jeff, Jeff Buchanan. Buchanan. Nice Pleasure. to meet you. You have a very attractive family, Mr. Witherspoon. Thank you. Nothing planned, it just happened. Shall we go? Yeah. Yeah. Bye. Good night, guys. Molly, you mind your grandpa now. She'll be fine. Bye. Where's Chris? I think she's upstairs. Come on, let's go upstairs. She is such a favorite. This is going to be great. Somebody in Annie. Annie up. I guess that's me. Come on. Get it in there. Door. Joe, will you deal around? What do you think I'm trying to do? There's something sticky on these cards. Well, if it's pink, it might be jelly. Molly was playing with them up there. Don't you have another deck? Well, we did have, but Arthur ate them. Arthur? Who's Arthur? The dog. <laughs> I don't do that. Do what? Don't light that cigar. Well, why not? I always have before. You never said anything before. I know, but see, now there's kids in the house, and cigar smoke's bad for their lungs. Bad for yours, too, but they're your lungs. You want to kill yourself? Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. uh, come on, Gus. That, that, that's kind of cold. Not as cold as death. I understand. I'll open. Gee. Yeah, 
Uh, I'm in. Then I better have two cards, Joe. Oh, for crying out loud, what kind of a game is this, huh? While you're playing sticky finger, I'll take three. Give me two. Yeah, I'll take two. Can you open this, please? Gus, where's the beer? Top shelf, Joe. No way. Milk and yogurt. I sent Chris to the market for it. You sent Chris? Yeah, why not? She's a minor, Gus. They won't let her take a bag of groceries out with beer in it. You're right, Joe. I tell you, pour yourself a glass of milk. It's better for you anyway. Your face is turning the color of salmon. Because I, I, I think your granddaughter here needs a lesson in manners. It's not my granddaughter. Then why am I doing this? Beats me. Pretzels with milk? You've got to be kidding. In my worst days, I never would have drunk milk with pretzels. The only thing missing is my mother. My mother would love this. She'd love to see her son playing poker with a glass of milk in one hand and some jelly playing cards in the other. Now, don't take no for an answer. We have to get him up here so we can tell him what's happening. It's a lock. That's poker talk. Yeah, we'll move it. You're such a luck out. How come? Because your grandfather has friends who imitate fish. That's so rad. I bet a dollar. I raise. Too rich for me. I'm out. I'm in. Grandpa, will you blow dry my hair before I go to bed? You sure do have a lot of queens, Mr. Kaplan. Uh, I'm gonna fool. I'll be right back. You believe this? <laughs> I would like to, but I don't. Please. This never <laughs> happened, did it? <laughs> the card game. No way. Not in a million years, so I believe. <laughs> Let's hear it. What is it? Well, we don't want to tell you this in front of your friends. Tell me what? Mr. Buchanan told Molly that he flew this plane in Vietnam. And that's impossible. Now, why? Because it's my own design. As a plane, it doesn't exist and never has. The only place this plane has ever flown is in my head. Well, it could look like one he flew. Grandpa, pilot knows this plane better than anything. Because its very life depends on it. Grandpa... Our mom is out with a liar. Uh-huh. So, uh, is the child's hair dry yet? It is. You can't expect me to let my granddaughter go to bed with wet hair now, can you? What I expect, Gus, when I play poker is a full deck. This one is missing two jacks and three tenths. And don't tell me that they stuck together because I got them all spread out here. Two jacks and three tenths. Right. I bet Molly took him to school for show and tell. She asked me this morning what's a full house. Where are you going? Home to bed to try to forget that this night ever happened. Before tonight, I have been in some horrible poker games, like the one in Fort Worth under a bridge. Ah, oh, come on, Kaplan. What are you talking about? You've never even been to Fort Worth. As my rabbi is my witness, I played poker under a Fort Worth bridge with three winos, a bag lady named Noma from El Paso. Was it a dark and stormy night? That's oh, right, it don't was. Ask I didn't know. Stuff like that just incites him. <coughs> it was a dollar thirty-five in a pot, and I was holding four aces. Two of the winos and the bag lady folded, so that leaves me and the other wino, nose to nose, me with my four aces. Him with this 45-cent bottle of Muscatel, bad breath, and a lot of hope pinned on a couple of deuces. He raises me. I put 10 cents in the pot to see him, and whoosh, there's a flash flood. I grabbed onto a utility pole, 
The three winos and the bag lady in the pot went all the way to Dallas on the crest of a ten-foot wave of mud. <laughs> Joe. What? Now that we know you've been in Texas and played in some real big games, make your point. It was a filthy, rotten, horrible game. But I want to tell you something sincerely from the bottom of my heart. This was worse. Oh, come on. We've lost him. He's never coming back. He's coming back. That's when he's happy, when he's miserable like that. The next game's a week from tonight, fellas. Will somebody try to remember to bring a new deck of cards? What flavor? Blue. So, uh, Gus, uh, uh, you gonna go to bed now? No. Gonna wait up for Jesse. And it's darn nice to have somebody to wait up for. What are you gonna wait up for her for? She, she's a big girl now. There's no such a thing, Lou. Not if you love him. Well, how was your date? Are the children asleep? Sure. Did they do their homework? I know Chris had a report that was due tomorrow. Yes. They did their homework. And they washed their face, and they brushed their teeth, and now they're sound asleep in bed. Now, how was your date? It was wonderful. Good. Maybe you ought to do that more often. Well, I was thinking about that. I guess you're waiting up so that I can tell you all about it, huh? I am. Well... We went to a restaurant called the Silver Strand, and... What about Mr. Buchanan? We went for a walk on the beach. I took off my shoes, and I... I felt like a girl. Still haven't mentioned him. You gonna see him again? I'm going to see him on Saturday. You see, he's got a restaurant that he thought I might like. So you like him? I think he's charming. He's a gentleman. Honey, did he have to talk to you about the war and what he did in the war? Mm -mm. No, it never came up. Why do you ask? Well, it came up here. He said to your daughter, Molly, he said he flew that plane in Vietnam. Chrissy designed that plane. I know. Maybe he was just joking. He's got a darling sense of humor. Well, he'd need one, wouldn't he? I mean, to talk about flying a plane that doesn't even exist. Anyway, he said it, and I thought you ought to know. And it's late, and I'm going to bed. Mm -hmm. Yes, I believe Jessica Witherspoon works here. Yes. Would you tell her that the wife of the man she had dinner with last night would like a word with her? I'm Carla Buchanan. I'm pleased to meet you. No, you aren't. You're anything but pleased to meet me. Well, you're right. I'm not pleased to meet you at all. I just didn't know what else to say. Wouldn't we be more comfortable in the conference room? I doubt that you and I are going to be comfortable anywhere, but lead the way. Sometimes I think the world is full of other women. It is, of course, but 
No wife likes to think so. I am not one of the other women. Well, that remains to be seen. How well do you know my husband? I'd like to make one thing very clear right now. I did not know your husband was married. Had I known, I never would have gone out with him. As it happened, he invited me out to dinner at Silver the Silver Strand, you ordered the warm lamb salad with curry dressing and fettuccine with prosciutto and red peppers. He had his usual top sirloin. He always has been wanting for imagination. After dinner, you took a walk on the beach, and he took you home to 14 Ashton Street, I believe. You had him followed. I had you both followed. My private investigator cost more than my analyst. So tell me, do you plan to see my husband again? We have a date for Saturday. Which you are going to break. Which I am going to break. We understand one another then. It has been, as they say, a pleasure doing business with you. Mrs. Buchanan, may I ask you two questions? Was your husband a pilot in the war? Jeff is 4F, allergies and a bad back, very on Rambo. Second question? Why did you marry him? He has the money. I go everywhere first class. I eat well. Do you love him? That's the third question, Mrs. Witherspoon. I only agreed to two. Good day. Can I do something for you? No, ma'am, just counting. From what I see, it looks like you'll be having supper with us. Yep, that's right. Well, isn't it Saturday night? Right again. And didn't you have a date with the great Waldo Pepper? I did. I still do. Oh, nobody move. Take that for me, please. Mm -hmm. And that. Be right back. Who's at the door? Is someone coming over? I have an idea this may be your mother's version of show and tell. Wrong night. Right night. The Corona del Sol isn't much on uh, blue denim. I know. Come on in. Mm. Come on out and back. Reservations are for seven. I know. I believe you've met most of my family, Mr. Buchanan. I don't believe. You met my daughter, Chris. Hello. Hi. I'm not sure I understand all this uh, Mr. Buchanan stuff. Bet your wife would. Oh. Well, I uh, suppose I should explain that. Please don't. I don't want to be lied to anymore. I didn't lie. I didn't say I wasn't married. That's a lie by omission. But you did tell my daughter that you were a pilot in Vietnam. That. I didn't mean anything by that. Her daddy was in that war. He did mean it. He had friends that died there. Friends that were disabled there. And I imagine, Mr. Buchanan, that when a man dies, he means it. I'm not sure this is the time or place to discuss You know, I wasn't sure it was the time or the place either. When I realized that you were a liar and a coward, I thought I'd call you and cancel our date and tell you not to call me again. And I would have explained why, and you would have said something really clever, and that would have been that. All very civilized. But I realized something, something with Gus. I realized the things we call civilized sometimes are hypocritical and cowardly. And when a person behaves like folks don't matter, You've got the right to say they're wrong. You've got the obligation to do that. So for the record, Mr. Buchanan, you're a self-centered, deceitful man. I'm very glad you're not in my life. And I'll be happier when you're not in my backyard. Do you know where the gate is, pal? I bet you can find your own way out. Okay. That's over now. Get a 
them while they're hot. Dig in. Thanks, sweetie. Hey. Mom? Huh? Can we say grace? Why not? For what we are about to receive, and for what we already have, we are truly grateful. Naomi got him. <laughs> How'd your game go? Who was? I did. I did. I did. I did. No. No, I did. Do you have any symptoms? Go fish. Any threes? to be about your bedtime? It's not a school night. I can stay up till 10. Uh-huh. I forgot. Any eats? Time to get to be anyway. Grandpa, are you happy Mom's dating? Well, I tell you, Molly, your mother's a young, beautiful woman. If we didn't allow her to go out now and then, we'd be selfish now, wouldn't we? It's not right to be selfish. Certainly not. You got any jacks? It's not right to be selfish. Dark clock never did work right. Just because they call you doesn't mean they're going to put you on. Lots of people get called for jury duty. Signify by saying, I do. I, I do. do. Mom, it was awful. Sweetie, what happened? What's the matter? Ghost? Don't worry about her. She's all right. Mom, we had a wreck. You went out on your own. I'm not sure you understand. Just... No, 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 no. It's you who don't understand, Mr. Witherspoon. I have no choice but to find you in contempt and to sentence you to 30 days in the county jail. made a good lawyer, but I'm not sure the judges would have liked that so much. You sound real good. Mom, don't you care about your credibility? No, I mean they just sound as good as I do now. The good news is only three more weeks of piano lessons. You promised me I could quit then. David, I don't want you to feel like that. 
Music can be a really important part of your life. Music is important. I just don't want to play the piano. Stevie Wonder plays the piano. But he also plays the harmonica. Now that I like. David, you'll thank me for this. You will, I promise. Right. In three weeks, I'll thank you for letting me quit. I just don't like lessons. All right. I thought that thing was stuck. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Do me a favor. Bring in the mail. Okay. Uh, one more thing. I want to tell you about lessons. Lessons are what you have, so you learn things. That's how that works. And Chris never complains about lessons, does she? Mom, Chris is weird. She likes it when the dentist cleans her teeth and her gums bleed. And besides, driving lessons aren't lessons. They're driving lessons. Move over this way, honey. You're getting too close to the center line. I'm watching it. You know, I'm a lot calmer with my driver's ed teacher. Well, honey, this was your idea. I didn't ask to be here. Well, I can't practice unless your mom one is with me. <laughs> so you want me to sit over here and be quiet, is that it? Well, no, Good. but... In driver's ed, they teach you that control of the emotion behind the wheel is just as important as control of the car. I agree, but I still rather run into a dirty look than a four-door sedan. Now look out for this fellow. Hey, leave a wig up, Paul Turkey. Teach you that, driver's ed? You went three feet over the center line. I know, honey. There's a lot of crackpots driving cars. You need to know that from the start. I think it's exciting. What? Being called for jury duty, don't you? Well, I don't feel like I need to sit around in a courtroom and listen to lawyers argue about uh, wordage in a contract, no. You know what my civics teacher says about jury duty? No. He says that it's at least as important as voting. Oh, he said that, did he? Mm -hmm. And he says that you should be proud when you're called to jury duty. I am proud. But I'm still going to try to get out of it. David, I asked you to get the mail. I did. It's there on the step. Oh, yeah, right where we'd find it. Thanks, well, pal. Well, Molly tossed a frisbee at me, and you're always telling me I don't play with her enough, so... That's so hard. You gotta learn to handle the fastball. You never make it to the big leagues, kid. I don't want you! I didn't make him do it! What's wrong, Mom? Nothing's wrong. What happened? The photo editor of the Post-Gazette got the picture that I sent him, and he liked it. It's great. Yeah, yeah, and he's going to publish it in the Sunday Magazine section of the paper. That is great. And he's going to pay me $50. Great! Really? Oh, thanks, fans. Yeah. I've been wondering yeah. if you'd take some new pictures of Arthur for Gretchen. For Gretchen? Well, she wanted to use him in a show and tell project, and I knew you wouldn't let me take him to school. Hmm. So I told her maybe she'd have to settle for some pictures. But on the other hand, if it really doesn't matter oh, to David, you... David, you spilled your juice. You guys better clean that up before it gets tracked in the house, huh? I'll do it. Thanks. What's the matter with you? She'll never let me take him to school after what happened with you back in Indiana. I didn't take him to school. He followed me. You let him cause so much trouble, you almost got expelled. I didn't let him cause trouble. Anyway, she won't let me. She didn't say no. What do you mean? At least I didn't hear her. Did you? Driving. Hi, you guys. Hope you're having half as good a day as we've been having here. Mom, it was awful. Baby, what's the matter? What happened? Gus? Don't worry about her. She's all right. Mom, we had a wreck. No, 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 no. It wasn't a wreck. A fella ran a stop sign and nicked us in the fender here. It's no big deal. And it wasn't her fault, either. It wasn't a thing she could do about it. Chris, are you all right? I'm fine, really. It just scared me. Of course you were scared. Did that jerk apologize? He wasn't a jerk. He was a very nice man. And yes, he was very sorry. Well, the important thing here is that nobody was injured. How much do you think it'll take to get your car fixed, Grandpa? 
I don't know. Maybe a couple hundred dollars. It's no big deal. The fellow that hit us had plenty of insurance, and it'll probably take care of everything. It was like a nightmare. I mean, we were driving along, and I remember we were talking about Grandpa getting called for jury duty. And wham! When are you on jury duty, Gus? I'm supposed to report on the morning of the 14th, unless I can figure a way out of it. The 14th? That's great. Can we come watch you in court? School day. Not Chris and I. They're having teachers conferences the 14th and 15th. Are you sure? Sure, my teacher told us we'd be off those days. But Grandpa said he was going to try and get out of jury duty. Really, Gus? Why? Don't you want to be on a jury? You know, you'd think I was trying to break out of jail or something. Just because I don't want to waste my time and sit around in a courtroom with a bunch of lawyers arguing. <laughs> You want to start it up? I enjoyed it. What? Jury duty. I told you about it. No, you didn't. Is it all clear? Yeah. Start it up. Sure, I told you about it. Remember the, the case of the ten-penny nails? Yeah, and, and the nuns and the watermelons and the limousine with the color TV? No, oh, I would remember that. You never said a word about that. Oh, I guess I never told you then. Turn it off. Oh, sure. See what what happened? A box of nails fell out of a truck, apparently. Of course, we never found out about that part. And somehow, five nails got stuck in the tires of an uninsured motorist who was able to drive three blocks before he discovered that he had two Two flats, or was it two blocks and three flats? I can't remember. Never Would mind. You... That's right. It doesn't matter. Anyhow, he he overcorrected in his steering. He crashes into a mom and pop fruit stand. He knocks watermelons all over the street. All over the street. Start it up. But Gus, it's watermelons, it's tomatoes, and plums, but we determined that the cause of the catastrophe was the watermelons. Hold it. Hold it. You got me hooked on now. What catastrophe? See, the watermelons hit the streets flat, right? Along comes a car full of nuns on their way to morning mass. They drive right through the fruit compost. Sloosh. The car spins out of control. It crashes into a limo crunch. And it just happened to be parked there on the side of the road. In the back seat is the driver watching color TV. It's our job on that trial to determine liability. Don't you want to know who was liable? Who? Yes. I don't want to guess. Turn it off. The owner of the limo. The owner of the limo was liable? Right. Didn't you say he was legally parked? He was legally parked, but we couldn't find out anything about who spilled the nails, which incidentally were made in Formosa. The nuns had a terrific lawyer. The owner of the limo was a Fortune 500 company. So it was simple. It was simple. Thank you, my friend, for once again reaffirming my faith in the judicial system. Gus, just because they call you doesn't mean they're going to put you on. They call lots of people. You're absolutely right. I'll probably just sit around down there for a while and then come on home. And that you will, to the best of your ability, render a true and honest verdict according to the laws of this state, instructions of this court, signify by saying, I do. I, I do. do. Please be seated. As I said, it's a very simple case. We will prove that the defendant, Mary Virginia Caldwell, 
did commit costly and vicious damage to the house that she rented from the plaintiff, Craig Painter. As a result of that damage, we will ask that the defendant pay for the restoration of said property and be forced to vacate the property immediately. Simple case. It shouldn't take us long, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Mr. Bartlett, you may make your opening statement. Um, Your Honor, I, uh, I, I received this assignment uh, only two days ago. Uh, the uh, legal clinic apparently has been hit by a flu epidemic. <laughs> Are you requesting additional time for preparation, Counselor? No, uh, not really, Your Honor. It uh, seems simple enough. Don't you intend to make an opening statement? Oh, um, <clears throat> well, uh, we uh, contend that the defendant is irresponsible, is not responsible for the damage. I didn't think it was fair. I mean, the guy's got a lot better lawyer than the woman. Well, what I could figure out is why a widow with a baby, who has no place else to go, would trash the place where she lives. Hmm. What about your guess? What do you think? Well, I'm not supposed to talk about it, see? Oh, yeah, that's right. I'll get it. Witherspoon? Yeah. Okay, just a minute. Grandpa's for you, uh, Mr. Hank. Mm -hmm. Insurance man, maybe we can fix the car now. Hello, sir. For what? Of course, I'm sure. I was in the car myself. I saw everything that happened. Yeah. Three thirty's fine. What's the matter, Gus? You know the nice old guy that uh, ran into us the other day by accident? Yeah, what about him? Well, it seems his memory slipped a little. Well, what do you mean? He claims that you were signaling to make a right turn, and that's why he ran into us. But, Grandpa, that's not true. I know it's not true, honey, and you know it's not true. So does he. And he's gonna sue us anyway. Come here, let me give you a hand, sweetie. Oh, my. Oh, here's, isn't it? I have to figure out what to tell Gretchen. What's that? Well, tomorrow's the day she wanted to bring Arthur to school for show and tell. She's going to be real sad when she finds out he can't come. Oh, well, I'm sure you'll find some way to handle that. There you go. Done. Get back to breakfast. I'll pick you up after school. If I'm not there, I'll be of course running a little late, and I'll be along soon. Who is this Mr. Forrester that we have to see anyway? He's an attorney for the insurance company. Some question about the liability. I don't see where there's any question, Grandpa. Calm down, honey. You just go see this fellow. We'll tell him exactly what happened, OK? Guess what time do you break for lunch at the trial? About 12.30, I guess. Well, I'm in the neighborhood. Maybe I'll stop by and join you for a bite. Good. Captain will be there with me. Hmm. Mr. Captain's going to the trial? How come? I guess he's like you, kid. Sucker for a real good time. I thought it was boring. <laughs> well, I'll try to have the next one more exciting. Hi, Mr. Kaplan. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, Joe. Good morning. Hi, Mr. Kaplan. Okay, come on, kids. Kick in the afterburners. Let's All go. Right, Let's go. Let's go. Mom. Molly, put the milk in the fridge. You know something? I'm actually beginning to enjoy the sound, Gus, of this kitchen at breakfast. Okay. Well, if you want your coffee, you better pour it and go. We're going to be late. I guess we'll have to take the second. Do you know about Gretchen? Mm. 12.30. You know what I'll do, David? You're the only person I know who actually likes tests. There's not much to tell about it, Gus. Joe. Sure there is, sweetheart. Sure there is. I'll be down in a minute. We'll be on our way. Of course, it's nice after breakfast, too. Then I remembered I left this small toolbox over at the Rendistry house. I done some repairs over there. You are speaking of the house at 143 Morinda Street. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, so I went over to the house. Uh, There's nobody there. 
I certainly didn't mean to trespass, but I needed those tools, so I used my own key to let myself in. You know, so I could get my stuff. And what did you find? Well, the place was an absolute disaster. It... Well, the only way to describe it would be to show it. I show you these photographs of the interior of the house. Do you recognize them? Yes, sir. Those are the pictures I took that day. Your Honor, we submit these photographs as plaintiff exhibit A and request permission to show them to the jury. Does the defense have any objection? No, I, I guess not, Your Honor. Since we claim that uh, she did not do it, um, I see no harm in showing the pictures. Permission granted. Thank you. Pass them down when you finish, please. timing. Oh, hi, Gus. Hi, Mr. Kaplan. I'm afraid it's not very good timing. What's the matter? I came to tell you that I can't have lunch with you today. Well, I had a call from the photo editor of the Post-Gazette, and he wants me to have lunch with him today. It's no problem. No, I didn't think that it would be for you, but see, he bought a picture from me, and, and then he invited me out for lunch, and I thought there might be a connection there. There is. He saw a picture he liked, he bought it, now he wants to meet the girl who took it. What's the matter with that? Not a thing. Not when you say it like that. <laughs> Thanks, Gus. <laughs> Thanks. I'm sorry about lunch. Oh, Gus, how's the trial going? Probably one more day. All right. I'll see you at home. Interesting case, though. You think so? Yeah. I, I, I disagree with some of the lawyer's strategy. Of course, uh, if you ask me, I... I, I can't uh, listen to you. It's against the rules. I couldn't even if I wanted to. Oh. And I don't. Okay, what do you want to have lunch? I'm in the mood for some pastrami, a nice bowl of chicken soup, maybe some matzo balls. I'm in the mood for a walk. A walk? Marinda Street. It's not very far. They got any good restaurants there? I don't know. Gus. I've never been there. Gus, Gus. <laughs> Gus, uh, what are we doing here? What do you say? I said, what are we doing here? Can't talk about it. Well, do you suppose you could talk about pastrami and chicken soup or something like that? I would have matzo balls, but uh, for some reason or other, I get sleepy after a big lunch. Can you think about that a little, Gus? <laughs> How about some lunch? <laughs> Why not? Isn't it true that when Mrs. Caldwell found the house in that condition, she called you? No, sir. She did not. That's not true. Mm. All right, uh, let me ask you this. Have I... Uh, have you ever sued a tenant before? Objection. Mr. Painter's litigation history is irrelevant. Sustained. I, uh, I guess I have no more questions. Somebody better have some questions. Now, I have to be very careful about how we ask her. It's a lot easier for mothers to say no to their own children than to other kids. Right. Now, the best thing we have going is that your guppies died. You're glad my guppies died? <laughs> no. I just mean that it'll make Mom feel sorry for you. I don't suppose you could cry, could you? You mean with real tears? Well, weren't you sad when they died? Sure. Well, they died over a year ago. We flushed them down the john. You don't have to say that part. I don't want to lie. Uh, what I've done, of course, is just a high-speed scan of the principal. Doing a what? 
The essential facts in the case interfaced with the procedures and philosophy of this corporate entity, obviously. Obviously. Well, that's what we're here about, sir, to discuss with you the facts of this case. Uh, I have to tell you that after talking to the attorney for the other fellow's underwriter, uh, I'm leaning toward going just for break-even on this one. Break-even? Uh, no, there's direct conflict in the reporting of what happened. Sure there is. That other fellow lied to you. <laughs> yes. Well, I don't want to be locked into a specific program at this point, but the way the data seem to be arranging themselves, I think we may just want to share the repair expenses down the middle with the other fellow's insurance company. Oh, that's not fair. Here are some of the bells that are ringing. Your age, your lack of experience, the fact that you don't have a driver's license. She has a learner's permit. Yeah, well, even so, the fact that she's not a fully licensed driver would certainly be used against us. Even if I was in the right? Yeah, uh, young lady, perhaps your grandfather here can help you understand a concept called cost-effectiveness. The investment in attorney's fees alone would be so great that the return to us would no, be... No, 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 excuse me. It's half past, Mr. Forrester. We came here to talk to you about what happened in this accident and ask you the best way for us to proceed. And I'm a professional in deciding such matters. Now, I'll complete the input survey before making any hard decisions. I wouldn't worry about what happens. Uh, I I'm sorry to rush, but I have another meeting. You'll be hearing from me, bye-bye. Grandpa, was he saying that they blame both of us? I think he might have been. I'm not sure. Aren't you furious? No. We'll let him try it his way. Then we'll get furious. Hi, Mom. Hi, sweetie pie. You're never going to believe what happened to Gretchen. Oh, hi, Gretchen. How are you doing? OK. I mean, considering something awful happened to her. What happened? Her guppies died. Oh, I'm sorry. And the worst part of it is now she doesn't have any pet to bring to show and tell. So I thought it might be very nice of me to let her bring Arthur to show and tell. And I would take care of him and everything. Hold that thought. With a spoon, hello. Yes, this is she. Oh, hi, Mr. Schuler. I... Oh, it was a nice lunch. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Don't you think that would be a very nice thing to do? Well, of course. She said, of course. But I thought she was going to let's go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, sure, I'll drop those things off. I'm not sure what. I'll do it. Sure. Bye-bye. What do you guess? Isn't that great? What? How to call for Mr. Schuler from the uh, Post Gazette, and he wants me to send some more samples of my work to him. Oh, that's very good. <laughs> Isn't this a great day? It ain't been that great for me. What's the matter? Lawyers. Been meeting with lawyers all afternoon. They're about to drive me out of my tree. Good morning. Oh, hi, Mr. Kaplan. I guess we'll be right down. Are you going to court together again today? No, not today. Those matzo balls made me sleepy. Oh? Just stop by for my coffee. Well, you help yourself. Trouble with Gladys's coffee is the flavor of it always reminds me just a little bit of cabbage. Cabbage? Yeah, red cabbage. So how did your luncheon go yesterday with the editor? Oh, it went just great. He asked for some more pictures. I'm not exactly sure why. I ever tell you I sent a picture into Life magazine once? No, you never did. Yeah, took it myself. Everybody said it was terrific. I sent it in. <laughs> tell Gus I said I hope he has a better day in court. Uh, Mr. Kaplan. What? Did they publish your picture? No. But I think they would have, only they already had one of that, that subject. And what was the subject? Statue of Liberty. Yeah. Hey, anybody who wants a ride to school better get ready 
right now. I'm leaving in about one minute. Now, if you'll just do what I say, I'll have a terrific time at school, I promise. Who are you talking to? What do you mean? Well, you were talking to somebody when I came in. There's nobody here. Who would I be talking to? That's what I asked you. Is Mom gone yet? Uh, no, she's going to take me to school because I'm late. She'll probably take you, too, if you want her to. No, it's OK. OK, bye. Bye. Goodbye kisses. I just don't see how someone from an insurance company could react like this. I mean, he does not care. He simply does not care. Honey, you blew off a lot of steam last night. I wouldn't let this thing fill up your mind. You might need that for school. Well, I still don't understand. I think you better get used to the idea that this will probably be settled the way the man said it would. Well, I think we should take the guy to court. You do, huh? No. If somehow we lost, Grandpa would probably have to pay for the repairs himself. And his insurance rates would probably go up. And they might even cancel his policy. I think Gus has enough on his mind. You mean the trial? You seem real concerned about it. Yeah. Do I understand the defense is resting, Mr. Bartlett? She has been resting for three days. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, the... the Uh, yes, Your Honor, the, um, the defense rests. Very well. We'll take a 15-minute recess. I will then charge the jury, and after lunch, it can begin its deliberations. Gretchen, your dog is so cute. Thanks. And your project was the best one in the class. Thanks. I worked hard on it. Don't overdo it. All you said was, this is a basset hound. Arthur took it from there. Are you mad? Why would I be mad? I don't know. Well, I'll tell you why. I wanted to bring Arthur to school so I could show him off, and now everyone thinks he's your dog. Can I hold his leash? It's up to Molly. He's her dog. Really? Can I, Molly? Sure. I want to show him to Brian. Come on, Arthur. Come on. <laughs> Good afternoon, ma'am. You looking for something? I'm not real sure, ma'am. Well, maybe I should mention that our neighborhood watch is one of the best in the city. Oh, forgive me. My name's Gus Witherspoon. <laughs> I'm sure not here to steal anything. <laughs> you, you, you know Mrs. Caldwell. Oh, of course I do. This isn't one of those rich neighborhoods, everybody living behind their big hedges and not even knowing their neighbors' names. And you know about her trouble? Yes, I do. Well, that's what I'm here about. I might be able to help her some. You're good neighbors? Yes, I'm proud to say I am. Why, she's such a sweet thing. And that baby. You know, when Mary Virginia went off to school, I told her I'd keep that baby and be glad to just for the hugs. But she's proud, and, and I respect her for that. And she she insisted on putting him in daycare center. She goes to school, does she? Yes, she's going to be a medical helper. You know, sir, after her husband was killed, she just didn't have a thing. But she's not one to sit around and feel sorry for herself. Mm -mm. She sure does keep the place neat and clean, doesn't she? Mm-hmm. Why, well, I'd eat supper off her floor and never have a thought. As neat as a pen. Do you, uh, 
I any chance know the man who owns the house? No, I don't. Well, you know, I might have seen him because there's been a lot of men around here the last month looking through those surveyor's gadgets and what all. Surveyors. So I might have, yeah, I might have seen him, but I don't know. Thank you. Okay, now my cat Mooney, she jumped on the sled to get to fishbowl because she loves fish. And so she, her foot exploded and she fell into the swimming. <laughs> the lunch break's over. Jennifer! Here, Molly! Where's Arthur? I don't know, I gave him to Megan. There's Megan. She doesn't have him. Molly, I don't see him. I know what it's like. I used to own a house I rented, and those people acted like that property was their own to do what they wanted. Now, I just think we have to send a signal to tenants that landlords have a few rights, too. I think sending signals is fine, but not here, sir. This is a trial. There's a lady on trial here for tearing up her own house. And there's a lot of questions that haven't even been asked. You better cut your plane, madam. Like what? Like, did she do it? Did Mrs. Caldwell vandalize the place where she lives? Come on. So everybody votes for the landlord. Yeah. Why not? That's terrific. Well, you're going to go along with it. No, sir, I am not. Would you please tell the judge I need to speak with him? went looking for additional information in spite of my specific instructions that your verdict was to be based only on official testimony you went out on your own yes your honor i did but i'm not sure you understand oh no 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 no, no. it's you who don't understand mr witherspoon what you don't understand is that for doing what you have done i am empowered to send you to jail for contempt of court You thought you had the training to become a legal investigator all of a sudden, is that it? No, sir, I did not think that. And yet you went there, to that house. For what purpose? Because I have some very strong feelings that justice isn't being done here. No, Mr. Witherspoon, it is my responsibility to see that justice is done in that courtroom. Oh, I see. I guess that's my mistake, sir. I assumed it was mine, too. I took an oath that said so. What exactly did you expect to find there that would help us both accomplish our sworn purpose? I don't know what I expected to find. I just wanted, I guess, to find out if this lady was in the habit of tearing up her own house. So I went out there. <laughs> her yard was beautiful. I spoke with her neighbors. Every one of them said she's neat as a pin. Which hardly proves anything. Right. But it does bring up some questions, doesn't it? That aren't even being addressed here in this courtroom. Oh, I, I suppose you know who did the damage. 
I think it's probably this landlord. I mean, he clearly wants her out of there. He wants to develop the property, and he has no cause for eviction. Mr. Witherspoon, that is pure conjecture. Do you realize that I am now forced to declare a mistrial? No, sir. I didn't know what could happen. A mistrial? It means we have to start the whole thing all over, get a new jury. Uh huh. Can you get her a new lawyer? The defense counsel doesn't meet with your approval. Did he meet with yours, Your Honor? We're never going to find him. Molly, what kind of talk is that? We know he's here. We'll find him. But when we do, we'll get kicked out of school. We? I didn't do anything. I'll tell them that. Maybe they won't kick you out. Molly, will you shut up and keep looking? Come on. It is an experience to be treasured. Please just imagine yourselves trodding the ancient streets of Florence, from the Medici chapels, up the Via Rigasoli, to the Academy of Fine Art. And then you turn into this famous building, and there, from the entrance, you can see it, towering over mankind, as did the mind of his creator, the most brilliantly conceived, astonishingly executed creation in the history of humanity. Look, I'm supposed to be in the boys' room. Sick. I'll just take a long time to recover. You go back to class. Thanks, David. Yeah, well, let me give you some advice. If her mom gets home, you better tell her what you did. You mean about misunderstanding and thinking it was all right to bring him to school? No, I mean the truth. I've learned from experience. And finally, I must say something to one member of this jury. Mr. Witherspoon, will you please stand? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Witherspoon, I assume you are now aware of the consequences of your action. The legal system of this country is a delicately balanced mechanism, and when one person decides not to follow the rules, the procedure is in danger. Your Honor, I didn't have... I will do the talking here, Mr. Witherspoon. Yes, sir. Now, in view of your disrespect for the instructions to this court, I have no choice but to find you in contempt and to sentence you to 30 days in the county jail. And I want to say something else. Even more important to the system than the rules themselves is the dedication of our citizens to the principle of justice in our society. People must care. And for all your misguided actions, you are a man who cares, Mr. Witherspoon, and I am grateful that we have men like you with us. Therefore, the 30-day sentence is hereby suspended. However, I am fining you $100. Court will post a schedule for retrial with newly appointed defense counsel. Court stands adjourned. All rise. Throw you in a slammer, huh? Suspended the sentence. Big difference. Uh, hey, I got put in jail one time in Junction City, Kansas. Ever tell you about it? Don't tell me about it, Joe. Not this morning, okay? What's the matter? I'm irritated. You're always irritated. That doesn't tell me anything. I mean, why, why should a profession be so highly respected that rubs so many people the wrong way? Well, it's like I always say. The law is like a spider web. Spiderweb. Sure. Catches the fly and it lets the hawk through. You always say that? I read it somewhere. 
I mean, how do I tell my grandchildren? What, what do I say to Chrissy? How do I make her understand the genius of our legal system when she only sees it through a nitwit like this Forrester? Well, in your case, I imagine you'll solve it like you do everything else. What do you mean by that? You'll charge right in there and you'll cut them down to size. You think of me like that? Oh, Gus, come on. Like some bull in a china shop? Gus, if I have offended you, I will apologize. No apology necessary. You're absolutely right. I am. Absolutely. Where are you going? The china shop. Mr. Forster, I've decided that I think my granddaughter ought to learn that somebody in this system cares a hoot about what's true and what's right. Mr. Witherspoon, I'm going to try to explain one more time to you why, on the basis of hundreds of experiences I'm going to explain in, this, to you. in this kind of a situation, Mr. Forster, why it is cost ineffective. I'm going to explain to you. I'm not a wealthy man, but I do have a little money put away, see? I want you to know something. I'm going to spend what I have to and put an ad in the paper. We'll tell the readers about our little set to here and what your company didn't do about it. You really think I'm susceptible to threats? Don't take it as a threat. Think of it as uh, a bit of news about what Sunday's paper is going to hold. Wait, 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 wait just a minute. This could be a very serious matter. It could. And we agree. You know what that could do to our operation here? Yeah. Matter of fact, I do. Miss, uh, have a seat, Mr. Witherspoon. And, Mom, you were so busy and I didn't want to bother you. No. And you're always saying I'm growing up and I can make more decisions for myself. No. So what are you going to do? Spend the rest of your life mourning about this guy? You know, I may. Know. I just may. Oh, come on. Look, what you don't seem to realize is that everything... Hi, hi, hi. <laughs> Hang on to your hats. I've got news that'll knock them right off your heads. What's wrong, Mom? Wrong? Nothing's wrong. I had a call from Mr. Schuler. Mom, there's something... Who's Mr. Schuler? The photo editor of the Post-Gazette. He's offered me a job as a photographer on the paper. Mom, that's wonderful. <laughs> I took Arthur with me to school today. Good girl. Anyway, it's better hours, more money, better benefits. I'm so excited. <laughs> it's great. I told her. Pretty smooth. Witherspoons. Hi, Chrissy. I thought you'd like to know Mr. Forrester has been thinking it over and he agrees with us. We're now going to try to pin this on the other driver. That's great, Grandpa. All right, honey, I'll see you soon. If you want the mule's attention, madam, you must first hit him between the eyes with a board. Anyway, Gus, I was telling you about Junction City, Kansas. This coffee shop waitress by the name of Darlene she thought that I looked like some guy who was public enemy number seven at that time. Gus, a sheriff and three deputies came after me with guns drawn. Grandpa, Mr. Forrester called. The other guy's insurance company is accepting full claim of the accident. They admit that it was his fault. Well, it was. <laughs> you ready? Mm-hmm. Good. Where are you girls going? Shopping for some new clothes. See you later. Bye. Bye. This is Witherspoon. I wanted to thank you for helping me get an A in show and tell. Come on, Gretchen, there's something I want to show you inside the house. Molly, what do you figure? Hmm. Anyway, Gus, it turns out that the guy they are after weighs 300 pounds. He's got red hair and he's got a tattoo of Harvard over on his chest. <laughs> what are you reading, my boy? Uh, it's an old French book, uh, Les Miserables. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's great. It's about this guy who gets put in jail for stealing a loaf of bread. Yeah. Were either of you guys ever put in jail? David, it's funny you should ask. 